So the function we're looking at here is f of x equals root x between 0 and 6. Not all that interesting, but let's move it into three dimensions. All right, so now we have an x-axis there, a y-axis there, and that blue axis is the z-axis. Okay, now we can take our function and rotate it around the x-axis. Watch this. Okay, spinning that around. What we get is called a solid of revolution, a solid built out of that. And the three-dimensional world is the one that we live in, so these are pretty interesting objects, things like wine glasses, vases, that kind of thing. So the thing we're interested in is the volume of the solids of revolution. So this is a solid of revolution, it's revolved around the x-axis, and we're going to be interested in what is the volume of the shape. Now before we get into the volume of solids of revolution, we need to go back to two dimensions just for a minute. Now in two dimensions, you already know how to find the area under a curve, right? You just use integration. If that's B and that's A, the area under the curve is going to be the integral between B and A of F of X. Try to remember that this integration is a revolutionary idea, right? This integration has changed the world, of mathematics at least. Alright, so what it really was doing was adding up rectangles. That's all that's happening when it comes to integration. But you're not just adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rectangles. You're adding what constitutes an infinite number of rectangles, or at least a number approaching an infinite number of rectangles. Go more formal than probably what I want to go. Let's do it anyway. The limit as n approaches infinity, where n is the number of rectangles. All right, so we're an infinite or very close to an infinite number of rectangles. And then we do this little sum here, or this product here. The product of the change in x, so the distance from here to here, times f x of i. So times this height, which gives us that wrinkle. Times this height, which gives us that wrinkle. Times this height, which gives us that rectangle. Rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. What we're doing when we find an integral is finding out the sum of the products of these, the sums of these rectangles, an infinite number of them. When we do a volume of solid of revolution, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So let's look at how to find the volume of this. We don't have rectangles anymore. What we have are cylinders, very thin cylinders. Here's a strip of a cylinder, a strip of a cylinder, a strip of a cylinder. Getting larger as we go on down this line. Not necessarily so in all functions, just in this function. Getting larger as we move along. That's besides the point. Alright, so what do we have? Well. We still have that change in x value there, and that's the height of each of those cylinders. Now think about the radius of each cylinder. The radius of each cylinder just corresponds with the height of the function, right? So we're slowly building up to a formula. Now, remember, each of these is a cylinder, and to find the volume of a cylinder, it's um, pi r squared times height. So what do I have here? Well, I have a height and I have a radius. Now I need to take that radius and I need to square it. And then, what else am I missing? Pi. I need to multiply by pi. Okay, so let's do that out here, times by pi. All right, so the volume of this is going, or the volume of one individual cylinder is pi times the change in x times the height of that individual point squared. Now, I don't want one individual cylinder, I want all of the cylinders, so I'm gonna have to do some sum, looks something like that. The volume equals the limit as n approaches infinity, the number of rectangles approaches infinity, and then we're gonna sum up these products. And these products represent the volume of each individual cylinder. Uh, I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit. So. You can see now that it's a little bit neater that it looks remarkably similar to this. It's just got a pi in it and it's also got a squared in it right there. All right, so how can we make it a little more simple? Because we can't like operate on an infinite number of sum. That doesn't work. We're going to have to do something more like an integral. This is the sum of all of these products, which means that every single product is being multiplied by pi. So we can actually bring pi outside of this thing. Now, now that we've done that, we're actually kind of finished. Look at this thing here. This is the change in x times 
a function. Now it's a function squared, but a function squared is still a function. And we know from up here that if we're taking a limit as n approaches infinity, the sum of the change in x times some function, that is equal to an integral. It's equal to an integral. So I can simply replace this with the integral between b and a of f of x squared. And what am I left with? Well, I've got this pi out the front that I can't forget. I'm really finished here now. What we're saying is that the volume of solid of revolution is equal to pi times f of x squared, or the integral of f of x squared, between b and a with respect to x. So, that brings us to the question that we started with. Uh, we drew that nice little picture, we had that nice little animation. We're going to find the volume of solid created by rotating f of x equals root x, where 0 is less than x is less than 6, about the x-axis. So it's the picture I've been drawing the whole time, uh, between 0 and 6, where the function is f of x equals root x. Okay, the volume is going to be really easy to find. The volume is going to be equal to pi times the integral between b and a of f of x squared. Now, f of x is root x, and root x squared, well, that's going to be really easy to find. Okay, so we have pi times, now b and a, what was that? That was 6 and 0. Root x squared is x with respect to x. Okay, so now we have pi times. Now, the uh, integral of x is x squared over 2. And we're integrating between 6 and 0. Uh, and then we have pi times. And then we do that whole thing there. So we get uh, 6 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. Uh, now, 6 squared over 2, that's uh, 18 minus 0, still 18. 18 times pi, 18 pi. It's a volume, so 18 units cubed, or 18 pi units cubed, approximately 50 something. 56.54, but you wouldn't go here unless you really needed to. 18 pi units cubed is more precise. Now that's a really good start, that's enough to get you going. There are uh, some more things that I'm gonna do in another video, things like rotating around the Y axis, or finding an area between two curves and then rotating that area about an axis. Uh, but that's enough for now.